Hello, this is Lesson 9 in Gage, New York for 6th grade, Module 1. It's called Tables of Equivalent Ratios, and you will need the classwork to go along with this video. The first one says, to make paper mache, the art teacher mixes water and flour. For every two cups of water, she needs to mix three cups of flour to make the paste. Find equivalent ratios for the ratio relationship of two cups of water to three cups of flour. And then you can see there they have a ratio table for you. And we're going to use that to organize <coughs> our equivalent ratios. So you'll always start with your original ratio, which is two cups of water to three cups of flour. Go ahead and come up with another ratio that would be go in the ratio table that would be equivalent to two to three. Hopefully you were able to come up with four to six. Now if you're not sure what other ratios are or if the ratio that you have are right, we can go back on one of our big ideas from Friday or Monday's lesson. And we know that all equivalent ratios have equal value. So if you find the value of the ratios, you can tell if the ratios are equivalent or not. So we have 2 to 3. And to find the value, we would put it in fraction form. And it must also be in simplest. So 2 to 3 as a fraction would be 2 thirds. Now I know that I have it in fraction form, but I need to make sure that it's in simplest form. So think back to fifth grade or earlier lessons and how you would know if a fraction is in simplest form. To find out if a fraction is in simplest form, you need to list the factors. And the factors of 2 are 1, 2. The greatest common factor for these two numbers is 1. When the greatest common factor is 1, you know it's its simplest form. So 2 thirds is the value of 2 to 3. So now we can find the value of 4 to 6. divide by the greatest common factor, we get two-thirds, which is equivalent to two-thirds, so I know these ratios are equivalent. So go ahead and come up with the next two ratios that would go in the ratio table. Push pause until you have that done. Okay, these should be the three ratios that complete your ratio table, and I'd also like you to find the value of all of them to ensure they are equivalent to two to three. Okay, you can see that all of our values are two-thirds, so I know these ratios are equivalent. Um, you might look at your water. What pattern or what rule could you make for the water side of the ratio table? 
each of them go up by two, so you could say the rule is plus two. And then look at flower. Does flower have the same rule? What rule could you set for flower? Hopefully you can see that's plus three. So the rules are not the same. And then also notice, do you have a, do you see a pattern when we're finding the value of these equivalent ratios? We have the greatest common factor of one, two, four. All of those go in order. So math is all about patterns and finding the rule. And so if you can look at these and identify those things, it will make it easier for you in the future. So go ahead and turn it to example number two. Read that to yourself. Okay, Javier's designing web pages. What would be the first ratio that they've given us for this problem? They've given us $700 for every three pages. So if we wrote that in ratio form, it would be 700 to three. Now, this is where you have to be careful when you're putting it in the ratio table. Make sure that you've got the numbers on the right side, the 700. Does that represent the number of pages or the amount of money? $700, so that would go on the money side. The three represents the number of pages, so make sure you put that on the pages side of your ta ratio table. This is still a ratio table, even though it's going horizontal instead of vertical. So go ahead and come up with your next ratio that would fit in this ratio table. Okay, hopefully you were able to figure out that for every six pages to make $1,400. And as you can see, we just added three and then added 700. So our rule for money is gonna be plus 700 and our rule for pages is going to be plus three. It's the same as our original ratio. So go ahead and complete this ratio table. Push pause until you're finished. Okay, your ratio table should look like this. You can see that every time it goes up by 700 and every time the pages go up by three. Now we can use this information to answer the next question. If Javier is saving up to purchase a used car that costs $4,200, how many web pages will Javier need to build before he can pay for the car? Well, the amount of the car is $4,200. So how many web pages does he need to design? Right here is where we can find the answer to our question, and now you need to write it in sentence form. So you write your answer as a complete sentence. Be sure to use part of the question as your sentence starter. Okay, if you're not finished, go ahead and push pause. We're gonna to move to exercise number one. And this is also a science lesson. If you have plants that have a fungal growth, you might need to make cornmeal juice. And to make cornmeal juice, you need to have cornmeal and water. So what is our ratio that they've given us for cups of cornmeal to gallons of water? You need two cups of cornmeal for every nine gallons of water. So go ahead and complete the rest of this ratio table with equivalent ratios 
Push pause until you're finished. Your ratio table should look like this, and you can use it to answer the questions. How many cups of cornmeal does Paul need for 45 gallons of water? Well, if you have 45 gallons of water, you need to use 10 cups of cornmeal. B says if he has eight cups of cornmeal, how many gallons of water does he need to make the cornmeal juice? So use your ratio table to answer that question in the complete sentence. Okay, you should have said he needs 36 gallons of water. So this is your answer for A. B. And then the last one is C says, what can you say about the values of the ratios in the ratio table? So think back to the first ratio table that we did today. And out to the side, we created a, the, we found the value for each of the ratios. And because all ratio tables have equivalent ratios, all of their values should be what? Write your answer in a complete sentence. We're going to stop there for today. Use this information to help you fill in uh, the rest of exercise number one, and then there's one more question of exercise number two on the back. And then you could use that work to do the problem set.